Let's have a closer look at a very special car today. The brand new road legal KTM GTXR. If you want to know more about the history of KTM cars, how they changed over time and why the latest version has a large empty space in the middle of the car, check out my other video in the description. The development route KTM took for their new XR is quite interesting. The first crossbow was designed for road use and as a track tool. They then developed the longer GT4, which was a race version. After this, they developed the even longer GTX with now five cylinders and updated it to a successful race car. The GTX-R now is literally the road legal version of it. Literally because it's basically the identical car as the race car, just with another wing. So let's take a step back and think about what a package we get here. We have a Formula 3 derived double seater carbon fiber monocoque, 2.5 liter 5 cylinder turbo engine with 500 horsepower, dual clutch gearbox and rear wheel drive. We have a carbon fiber bodywork and motorsport proven aerodynamics and suspension. In addition to that, they, as discussed in my last video, used the large packaging space in the center of the car for a large 95 liter fuel tank and a, for this category impressive, 160 liter trunk, which is by the way very easy to reach because of the reversely opening cover. And all of that starts at 284,900 euro. So that puts the KTM right between cars like the 911 GT3 RS and Lamborghini Huracan STO. Although we have to say that the KTM is a very different car and somehow in its own category. But KTM says the XR can reach similar to better lap times than Porsche and Lambo and can reliably be driven hard for many laps, unlike some of the competitors. Additionally, KTM offers a car here that brings features to the market that usually only brands like Koenigsegg, Pagani or McLaren can offer. Carbon fiber monocoque, carbon fiber bodywork, low production numbers, they only want to produce 100 per year, a unique door opening mechanism and endless customization possibilities. So let's dive a bit deeper into the technical aspects of the car. The special thing about the package is that engine and gearbox sit transversely in front of the rear axle, so the whole drivetrain is at the very end, which results in a slightly rear biased weight distribution. Because of that, we have almost identical brake dimensions with 365mm disc at the front and 356mm at the back. But there will be a power part option for 380mm at the front. We have a double wishbone suspension all around with a flat profile for better aerodynamics. That is important because the main airflow from the hidden side pods flows through the front suspension. The side pods develop the traditional crossbow concept further and keep the water radiator on the left hand side and the intercooler on the right, closer to the turbocharger. But the car has a closed cockpit now, so they need an air conditioning system. One of the important points for KTM was to keep their traditional monocoque the same. But it's effectively a double-seater Formula 3 monocoque and not designed for a closed cockpit. And so the air conditioning system could not fit in the dashboard like in other cars. Additionally, the engine and hence the AC compressor sits at the very back. So they packaged all AC components in the back. We can see here the right side port with intercooler, engine intake and interior filter. The air is then cooled or heated and sent forward to the cockpit. But how can you get the cabin air into the cabin if it's a closed cockpit and you cannot change the monocoque? They used an external pipe through the left side pod, which then enters the cockpit. Here it's nice to see that KTM uses the pretty Audi A3 air vents. At these you could actually pull and push the center to change the airflow from spot to diffuse. That cost Audi lots of money to develop this reliably without any noise. And in the end the customers didn't get it and Audi stopped producing these vents with the facelift. But back to the KTM. The cage we saw on the race version is now gone, because the front bulkhead and roll structure are enough for a road car. So the canopy is really just a cover and KTM learned from their track experiences and built a windscreen with two side windows instead of one large piece. So now you can open the side windows and swap the windscreen separately. Another thing to note is that the windscreen viper, which includes the washers, is also lifted up with the cover, including its motor. Let's have a closer look at the aerodynamic concept now. 
we have a very low front with two large intakes, which now have meshes to protect the interiors from stones and other stuff. Below we have a splitter with a front diffuser either side. All these surfaces are identical with the race version. The air that enters the car flows between monocoque and the inner side of the front wheels into the side port intakes, that are very far forward. We can also see how nicely they sealed the front wheels in this area. The air then hits the radiators behind the cockpit and flows out at the back. This means also that the air exiting the front diffusers will end up in the side pods too. Additionally, there are exits behind the front wheels to extract air from the front wheel arch. With these hidden side pods, the KTM has a very smooth side design that is continued by the smooth greenhouse and a rear cover without any outlets. No wonder, because the engine is far further back. And because it's in front of the rear axle, there is still space for a decent rear diffuser. For a small manufacturer like KTM, it's a big thing to create a new design for their car. And so they designed some additional air intakes in front of the rear wheels, just in case they need them. Right now these intakes are closed, but they could be opened anytime if you need additional cooling. For the street version, KTM changed to a smaller wing with the mountings from below. It is raised in the center because of the different approaching angle behind the cockpit. Interesting are also the lights of the GTXR. Because street legal lights are an important design factor, expensive to develop and produce, small scale manufacturers sometimes use lights that are already available. Like the Lamborghini Diablo used indicators of the Lada Niva and headlights of the Nissan 300ZX. Or the F40 taillights are suspiciously similar to East German campers. KTM wanted to use their own lights and simply positioned four taillights of the Husqvarna motocross bike at each side of the rear end. They changed the colors of the LEDs to have orange indicators and white reverse light and tinted the covers. Now they have their own unique taillights for the GTXR, and it's a nice bridge to their motorcycle lineup. Another thing that contributes to the futuristic look is the camera system CMS. This includes one camera in the top center and two at the sides. Additionally, there is one camera in the rear wing which helps with parking. With the structure of the car, it's made to be a convertible and it originally was. So an open roof version with a windscreen could be possible. The large trunk could be big enough to store the roof. But since rolling down windows are not possible, there would be an interesting design challenge. All in all, we can say that the KTM GTX-R is a road car like no other. It's motorsport proven and offers features, design, lap time and daily usability you would usually not get anywhere else for this money. And by the way, because it's the identical car to the race car, you can fit all motorsport parts to it. So how do you like the new GTX-R? Let me know in the comments below and see you at the next video.